water. Water, the most common substance on Earth. It is with us every moment of our lives. But do we know the secrets of this amazing element? Where did it come from? Who bestowed water on our planet and why? The only such planet in the universe. Perhaps only water itself knows the answers to these questions. There is just as much water on Earth today as there was when everything began, when the world was born and acquired the shape and sensations we know so well. So what we did was what we always do here, do very careful work in a narrow field. So we said, let us focus on water, but we will look at it from many angles. In the Holy Scripture, water is more than simply a physical substance. It's a certain concept, and that concept is connected in a special way with the idea of life. Nothing in the world is softer and more yielding than water. Yet it wears down the hard and the strong, and none can overcome it, though anyone can conquer it. That which is yielding conquers the strong, and the soft overcomes that which is hard. Everyone knows this, but no one dares to live by it. The Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu wrote about water two and a half thousand years ago. I mean, water as such has been extensively studied. I mean, it is, it is well known that water has unusual properties, physico-chemical properties, when compared to other liquids. No scientist has been able to explain, for example, why water's density increases below the freezing point and becomes less above freezing. Any substance contracts when it's cool, but water does the opposite. It expands. People learned to exploit this unique property in the distant past. Inhabitants of the far north would quarry stone by pouring water into cliff face crevices before the frosts came. In the south, people pounded wooden wedges into cracks in the rock and then doused them with water. As they swelled, the wedges would break the stone. Much later, scientists established that water in pores and capillaries is capable of creating enormous levels of pressure. In a seed, for example, it reaches 400 atmospheres at the moment of germination. That's why a plant shoot can break through asphalt with ease. It's such a small molecule as well. Um, it, it, it is very specific that these properties are, are of water. Um, and you won't, you won't find other molecules that have, that have all of the similar anomalies. If even a single one of these anomalies were missing, life itself would not exist on the planet. Every one of water's properties is unique, and they do not easily fit into the generally accepted laws of physics. Science has not yet been able to answer the question of why water is the only substance on the planet that can exist in three states, liquid, solid, and gaseous. Why does water have the highest surface tension of all liquids? Why is it the most powerful solvent on Earth? And how, in defiance of the Earth's gravity, is water able to rise through the trunks of gigantic trees against tens of atmospheres of pressure? We have taken a great step forward. We have really understood that we know almost nothing about water. Therefore, it is a great step because this realization is followed by the desire to find something out. 
Southeast Asia. The year is 1956. The place is a secret military laboratory for developing and producing weapons of mass destruction. Work has been underway here for several years on a powerful new generation of bacteriological weapons. The scientists are discussing what properties this weapon should have at one of their protracted secret meetings. Suddenly, the session breaks off. All of the participants are taken to the hospital with symptoms of severe food poisoning. An investigation into what happened quickly hits a dead end. The scientists had consumed nothing except water from the carafes on their tables. The water was tested. No harmful additives were found. Its chemical composition was H2O. That's what the report said. Poisoning caused by ordinary water. Twenty years later, a fantastic hypothesis was put forward. A hypothesis that could explain water's unpredictable behavior. Water has memory. Experiments done in many countries around the world have shown that water receives and makes an imprint of any outside influence, remembering everything that occurs in the space that surrounds it. Any substance coming into contact with water leaves a trace in the water. Had our ancestors guessed this when they used silver vessels to turn ordinary water into healing water? It is today the best antibiotic that is made as good in Afghanistan and Iraq. The American army uses this water, one atom per hundred million to kill all the germs in a wound. So the President of the United States uses this water to keep uh, infectious uh, bugs from his hand. So I said, how can this water be? As it records information, water acquires new properties, yet its chemical composition remains unchanged. So their theory was the chemical composition of the water is important. Now the sensational news is that that is nonsense. The structure of water is much more important than the chemical composition. The structure of water means how its molecules are organized. We can see how water molecules join together into groups. These are called clusters. Scientists came up with the idea that these clusters work as memory cells of a certain sort, in which water recalls the whole history of its relationship with the world as if on magnetic tape. People don't think when you turn on the light, the water is changing. When you turn on the electric field from the power lines, the water may change. So that is the direction of research. Water, of course, remains water, but its structure, like a nervous system, reacts to any irritation. Modern instruments have made it possible to record the fact that within each of water's memory cells there are 440,000 information panels, each of which is responsible for its own type of interaction with the environment. If you consider a cluster as a group of specific molecules, um, then it can survive only a short amount of time. But if you consider it as a structure whereby molecules can leave and other molecules come in, the cluster can last effectively for a very long time. The stability of the cluster structures confirmed the hypothesis that water is capable of recording and storing information. It may be the single most malleable computer, which can, it's like a computer memory. It's the memory of information. We must know how it is arranged. It is like the alphabet. If I give you the alphabet, you don't know a word, you don't know a letter, you don't know a sentence. So the molecular structure is the alphabet of water. And you must make a sentence out of water, and you can change a sentence.
In the winter of 1881, the sailing ship Lara was on a course from Liverpool to San Francisco. On the third day of the voyage, a fire broke out on board. Among those abandoning ship was the captain, Neil Carey. The water supply soon ran out, and the crew experienced the torments of thirst growing by the hour. Later, when they reached shore safely after three terrible weeks adrift at sea, the captain, a man with a very level-headed attitude towards events, described what had saved them. We were dreaming of fresh water, he said. We began to imagine that the water around the lifeboat was turning from ocean blue to the greenish hue of fresh water. I summoned up my strength and scooped some up. When I tasted it, the water was fresh. Well, take a famous event, when Jesus Christ turned water into wine. He didn't add some sugar or lactose, but he imparted an absolutely special property to the water. We have carried out many experiments on the effect that quite diverse factors have on samples of water. Magnetic fields, electrical fields, various objects, and also including a human presence and human emotions. And it became clear that positive and negative human emotions are the strongest elements of influence. Professor Korotkov's laboratory has conducted numerous experiments on the effect of human emotions on water. A group of people were asked to project onto a flask of water in front of them very positive emotions like love, tenderness and concern. Then the flask was replaced with another one and the people were asked to project emotions of a different type, fear, aggression, hatred. After this, measurements were taken on the samples. The water exhibited changes that were clearly in one direction or another. So love increases water's energy levels and stabilizes the water, while aggressive emotions reduce the energy and make radical changes in the water. I hoped to show people that uh, water could have a memory. Dr. Imato's laboratory does research on water samples which are subjected to various forms of outside influence. The impressions made upon the water are recorded by swiftly freezing it in a cryogenic chamber. This is what water heated in a microwave oven looks like. This is the effect of a mobile telephone. Somebody said, thank you to this water. Excuse me. You disgust me. With modern technology, it's possible to structurize water artificially. When seeds were grown under laboratory conditions using this kind of water, the soy sprouts had six times greater photon radiation than when ordinary water was used.